Hello, how are you today? Hope you enjoyed the good rain and been safe from the storm. A lot of folks haven't been. We want to pray for them. And it came pretty close, didn't it, to us? But may the Lord bless us. He is so merciful to all of us. Uh, may He comfort those that's been disrupted, loss of life and homes and situations. He is a God of all comfort since He's a God of all grace. I want to think about the cross today as we approach the celebration of the Lord's death, burial, and resurrection called Easter. Uh, we need to be thinking about the cross because that's what gives us the reality of why we serve the Lord, why we praise the Lord, uh, why we uh, have any foundation to stand on. And so may we try to answer the question, uh, at least partially so, of why did Jesus die on the cross? Uh, there's certainly no way we could say with any truth, uh, uh, did Jesus die on the cross? For, for sure, we know he did. And uh, so the question we should ask is, why did he do it? We know that he did it. We would not be here today if he had not. But he did do it. He died on the cross. And you might wonder, why did he die that way? Because God could have sent an angel to kill him like... Uh, he did to be there for Abraham when he was going to offer Isaac. You remember, and Abraham obeyed God and took his only son Isaac and uh, was going to be the offering. But that angel stayed his hand, you remember, and told him to look over there in the thicket. There was a ram caught in the thicket. That is also a, a pointing to the cross. Uh, God could have sent an angel like he gave the message to Joseph and to Mary, but, but he didn't do it. God uh, had a purpose in the cross. And uh, we need to be thankful that he does. And, but it's okay to ask God why. It's never okay to doubt God, but it's okay to ask God why. Uh, he might or may not reveal to us the completeness of it. I'm sure we'll never understand the blessedness of our Savior's cross work until we get to heaven itself and praise him firsthand face to face without a dimness of humanness and doubts and fears. We do know that he took the scars with him to heaven. It's the only thing that Jesus took to heaven from earth is his scars. And so, so there's relevance there of the cross is pretty doggone important in our lives. In fact, uh, for preaching and for uh, serving God and worshiping God, hey, without the cross, it's not a, it's not a valid way to do it. No, it has no meaning. Uh, it's amazing, though, how much the cross means to so many people when you're down and out. Have you noticed how many crosses people put in their yards during the pandemic? How many are still there? I notice crosses every day and evening when you ride around it. People just left their crosses out. We have one here. I bet you do too. Or at least you think about the cross. This time of the year, the pine trees, uh, have you noticed the blooms on the pine trees? They'll form a cross. Dogwood trees, a cross. Uh, I know everything's going underground now as far as electricity and power button cables, but you know, the, uh, the telephone poles or light poles, or electric lines put up crosses. You, you can just see crosses everywhere. And uh, rightly so. What, what a comfort the cross should bring. What is such a mystery though is how something so horrific could bring us such comfort. That is what the mystery is. That's why we should ask, why did Jesus die that way? It is described as the most horrific, gruesome, cruel death that a human being can experience, where a person is nailed to a cross, a wooden cross, jogged or jabbed in the ground to stay up in a hole, has a little lever on the bottom of it, maybe a little ledge they can prop their feet up, so they won't die so fast, they can still push up at times, but they lay there for days suffering, suffocating to death, the fiercing feeling of the pain that they must feel, have felt. And our Lord, beside all that, was beaten, was uh, scourged with a whip with metal barbs kind of like on it. His back was cut. He was even unrecognizable, so to speak. Uh, spit on, mocked, made fun of, cursed, slapped. That's what they did to Jesus. But, you know, through it all, he could have called legions of angels, the Bible said, to help him. He did not do it. He stayed on the cross. Jesus came to die on the cross, and we should be interested in why did he do that. I want to read some scriptures and then look at some other verses of scripture and maybe point out three or four or five reasons why Jesus died on the cross. I sure don't want to think 
or you to think that's the only reasons, but I think these are some of the most prominent ones, at least that come to my heart today anyway, why Jesus died on the cross. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1, the Apostle Paul, who was the Apostle certainly to the Gentiles and all of God's people, because Paul was a Gentile, the cross meant something to him. You better believe it did. He saw that crucified Savior, and he understood when he got up on the road to Damascus what Jesus had done for him, and he was willing to be obedient to it. We need to understand what God has done for us on the cross of Calvary. We would not complain and be so wimpy when it comes to the challenges that we must face and the pain we must bear and the crosses we must care um, in this world if we really saw the weightiness of it. Uh, in verse, 1 Corinthians again, uh, chapter 1, verse 17, the Apostle Paul to the church at Corinth and to us says, For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. It doesn't matter how soupy and smoothy a preacher might be. If he's not preaching the cross, he's not preaching. It doesn't matter where you've been to school or if you've been to school or if you haven't. Uh, it doesn't matter where you take your text. Any text you take out of the Bible, you ought to be able to take it right cross country to Calvary. If it won't hook up to Calvary, it's not the word of God. So, so that's what Paul said. He said, listen, I'm not about to, to smooth you with air, uh, give you itching ear or something to like. I come to preach the cross. When a preacher preaches the cross and we have the cross preached to us, we have to deal with our sin. The reason the world is so shaky and in chaos today, people do not deal with their sin. Multitudes of so-called Christians are living sinful lifestyles. Parents so-called Christian homes are supporting sinful lifestyles. We live with sin every day, and it doesn't mean that we can ever quit sinning. We really could because of the cross, but because we still have an unredeemed flesh, we won't do it until we get to heaven. But we ought to want to try. We ought to be so grieved about sin, it ought to break our hearts. We ought to go to God as soon as we can and tell him all about it and feel the refreshing of our daily cleansing that we all need. That's what happened when Jesus washed the disciples' feet, you remember. And he said, happy are you if you do these things. The cross can make you happy when nothing else can. He says that in verse 17. Then in verse 18, for the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. But unto us which are saved is the power of God. So the first reason that I want to say about why Jesus died on the cross is that so we could have power because we died with him, according to Romans 6. And we died to sin, we've been crucified with him. So sin in reality has been crucified because of Christ's death on the cross. I mean our sin. We're not to serve sin any longer. We have power to serve Christ. Now you will serve one or the other. You'll either serve the devil or you'll serve Jesus. The truth will make you free but the truth also hurts, and we need to understand what a blessing the cross has given us great power to uh, serve the Lord and thank Him for it. I'll tell you what, you think about this. Have you ever thought about why David seemed to get away with committing adultery and committing murder uh, and yet still be the king and be called a man after God's own heart? How did he have the spiritual power to do that? How did he have the wherewithal to cry out to God to restore unto him the joy of his salvation? How did he have the presence of mind to be convinced that he had sinned against God and him only when David was told by Nathan that he was the man that did that? I'll tell you why. Because the cross of Jesus Christ. No, it hasn't, hasn't literally taken place yet, but when Christ died on the cross, it goes all the way back to the beginning of time. For all of God's redeemed is who Christ died for. I know you know this, but you got to keep in mind, Christ did not die for everybody. No matter what religion tries to tell you, he never did. Uh, but he, did he die for you? That's the question you need to ask. Then why did he die for you? He died for you to give you power to serve him and to bless his name. I can tell you for sure, I don't know where I should even be called a preacher or not, but how do you think if God ever blesses me with a message from him in a spiritual way and in connection to love him like I do, where does that come from? It comes from the cross. How could a, a man that's committed the sins that I've committed be 
able to crawl up in the pulpit and preach God's holy word to God's people every Sunday. I don't know. I, I, yes, I do. It's the cross. The cross is how God vindicates his holy justice and forgives us of our sins and cleanses us. It's the same power that Jesus told the woman called in adultery, go and sin no more. That's what God is telling you and God is telling me because we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. And without the cross, that sin would still be on us. And the wages of sin is death. There would be no power in preaching. There would be no gospel. There would be no, no way we could uh, even uh, bear any of the spiritual fruits had not Jesus died on the cross. So I want you to see the power that you have because that's why Jesus died on the cross. He had to die so that we could live. And the scripture says, if since he died for us, don't you think we should live for him? The scripture says we should. And it's not through our power that we live, but it's Christ. It's he that liveth in us. And that only comes because of his death on the cross. He was crucified for us. So that's the first thing we want to think about was why did Jesus die on the cross? That's where we get your power. You don't get it from yourself. You don't get it from your good works. You don't get it from, from religion or, or doing this, that, and the other. Uh, it comes uh, because of a sacrifice. The sacrifice is what makes a difference in your life. The only power you're going to really have to leave influence for good in this world is going to be noted by the sacrifice you make. doesn't matter how much offering you put in the plate on Sunday. doesn't matter how many times you go to church how many crusades you go on or how much evangelism you do. What matters is what's in your heart. Are you presenting your body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to the Lord when you worship or when you give? Is it giving um, out of your abundance or is it getting given out of your need? Jesus told the woman that cast in two mites and everybody else had finished theirs. Jesus noticed that one woman, that poor widow, he said that woman has cast in more than anybody else because she gave all she had. That comes from the power of the cross. To love our neighbors as ourselves. that comes from the cross. The power that God gives us to do that. If Jesus not died on the, sin, on the cross, that would not happen. See, Jesus has to get to the lowest before we can get to the power, just like he did Paul. You remember Paul's thorn in the flesh? We've talked about that recently. We ought to think about it every day because he says there, he gave him that thorn as a messenger from Satan to buffet him so that in his weakness he should find strength. That power to understand that Christ had died, that thorn in the flesh was a suffering, but we have then the likeness or the similitude of, of suffering with our Savior because we also bear pains and thorns and situations in life that we'd like to be different but they cannot and Jesus says he that takes up this cross and he just doesn't take up his cross and follow me he's not worthy of me so that's why we think about it power uh, secondly I want you to see the with me that the cross why did Jesus on the cross to praise God to praise God and maybe that should be the first one but I want to tell you in Romans 13 uh, not Romans 13, Romans 3, verse 24, tells us this from God's Word. The thing about why Jesus died on the cross is this. It wasn't that the Romans killed it. They were the, they were the means God used. It wasn't that the Jews that didn't like him killed it. It wasn't described to the Pharisees. You know who, who killed God on the cross? Or Jesus? God did. And don't say, I've heard some people try to make a fine point about, well, Jesus really didn't die. Uh, God can never die. God that Jesus Christ, the humanity of Christ, the incarnate Christ, God died. And I want you to know he was graveyard dead. If he didn't die, then we don't have any hope. So, so you don't need to try to split hairs and say, well, God didn't die, God can't die. That is true, the Godhead, in the God. But Jesus Christ, the mission he came, he came to die. And that's what he did. And he did it for you and me. It was only be, either be us or him. And he chose to be him. He took on our sins for us because the wages of sin is death. and But he, through Christ, we have everlasting life. Why? Because he paid the wages. And that's what praised God. When God says, this is my beloved son, the man of transfiguration, we saw Jesus, whom I'm well pleased, hear ye him. We ought to hear God. Well, that's what God did. God killed Jesus, and he did it to love us and to hold us and to help us be holy people. 
and to give us the power to be holy people and to turn away his wrath. That's mainly. We, that's the praise of God. Not our sins, but our holiness. And how are we going to get that if we're dead spiritually? God had to do it. God had to do something. He had to intervene, and he intervened in a horrific way as far as we think, but to God, it was the only remedy to justify his holiness. And in Romans 3, 24, it says, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Verse 25 is the one I wanted you to see with me. Whom God, see, God's the one that did this, set forth, that is Jesus, to be a propitiation. That word propitiation means he appeased God's anger. It's, just, it's, it's not that Jesus died so that our sins could be forgiven, but also he died to turn away the wrath of God. Do you know what it would be like to fall in the hands of a living God without the cross? My goodness, it would be eternal hell. That's what it would be. And at one time, according to Ephesians 2, we were all children of wrath, even as others. There's no difference until God did this. So for God's praise, that God set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness. Now, see, here's the praise of God. To declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. Why do you think that God says in his word, the angels even rejoice over one sinner that repenteth? Because Jesus died on the cross. And that righteousness that is, God has says come forth by faith, uh, in, in, the, in the Lord Jesus Christ is the righteousness that praises God. So when we confess our sins and we acknowledge that we're sinners, we're praising God. We need to understand that Jesus died on the cross and that ought to be satisfactory to us and keep us right where we need to be. Not only to, for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. But to declare, I say, is righteous. That's what the death of Christ did. And then so thirdly, I think about the why did Jesus die? He died to take our place. Because if Jesus didn't do it, we would have to do it. And uh, Galatians chapter 3, did you know that the cross, the cross is considered to be a curse? Um, it says in verse 13 of Galatians chapter 3, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law being made a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is every one that hangeth on a tree. Well, Jesus removed that curse. He took our place on the cross. Um, you remember Judas Iscariot, who, who uh, betrayed the Lord Jesus. He, was, he became a curse. He died on a tree. He hung himself on a tree, the Bible says. Uh, or he hung himself. And I'm picking that would probably be, most likely be a tree. I think of Absalom. In the Old Testament, one of David's sons who created such a division in Israel of, of causing the Israelites, some of them, to turn against King David, uh, was pursuing his own father with an army to kill him, and his hair got hung on an oak tree, the scripture says in 2 Samuel 18, and he was just hanging there, and Joab saw him and threw darts at him, shot darts at him, and killed him. He hung there. But after his death, Israel then made peace uh, among their families. See, Christ conquered the devil on the cross. That's why he had to die. He took our place. It's something we couldn't do. And that's why we have victory in Jesus. I already said the power, but that's where it comes from, the cross. You don't have anything without the cross. That's the only remedy for sin we have, uh, to know that that's how God is most praised. You know, God is most glorified in the cross of Jesus Christ and his crucifixion than any other thing, any other event in theology. And so it also has is, is been said by, by people that study the word of God that, that we uh, are when God is most glorified, we are most satisfied. God wants us to be satisfied with what? If he's glorified with the cross more than anything else, we ought to be satisfied with it. We ought to say, Jesus did this for me. You ought to have the confidence, the boldness, the assurance that Jesus died for your cross, for your sins on the cross. That's why he died, so that you could have happiness and joy, certainly eternal life. But you have been, had a curse removed from you. So next time you have a bad day, don't fool around with bitterness and complaining and moping around as if nothing's happened good to you. The curse has been removed 
by the death of Jesus on the cross of Calvary. And what a, what a blessing that is when we see that, to know this, that, and bless that in his way. There was one other point I wanted to try to make before I let you go. When you think about why does, did Jesus die on the cross? Not if he died, but he did die. So why did he die? It's amazing how God could love us so much, isn't it? But he sure does, and we need to thank him for it. And bless God for it and thank him for it. Uh, it also, lastly, I, I wanted to mention the cross. What have we tried to say? But why did Jesus die on the cross? Well, that's where we get our power. God knew that we were weak. We had none. The cross brings you power. And Paul says if the gospel's not wrapped up in the cross, this word is not, it's not nothing it's not any power to it, it's just academics, okay? The cross is what gives you uh, strength and, and hope, it's power. The cross praises God. Nothing cra praises God any more than the cross. And, and it's not the cross you carry around your neck, it's the cross that Jesus died on. And the, and the reality of knowing that by that death of the perfect one who had never sinned, that he took our place and he died our death. And he, he took our place. By that, he takes the curse off of us. And that's a blessing. When somebody says they forgive you, that only comes because Jesus died on the cross. When you can have a forgiving heart, that only comes because Jesus died on the cross. And so what a blessing. But then lastly, Jesus died on the cross to fulfill God's promise. Uh, way back in Zechariah, one of them I think of, Zechariah 12, 10, Jesus well, the prophet says about Jesus, they shall look upon me whom they have pierced. Now, that was hundreds of years for the cross, that he would be pierced, and they would mourn as one mourneth for only child. He's talking about the Jews, uh, but, but we see that as the prophecy that Jesus would die on the cross, and he would die for us because it's going to fulfill the promises of God. Now, really, the scripture that says that most plainly is Acts 2, verse 23. And I'll say, say this to the Apostle Peter preaching to the people there. And when you think about the, the New Testament church and what brought the power of the revivals, that was the cross. When we ever have a revival, as God sends us one, it's going to be the cross that does it. It won't be, uh, uh, it won't be uh, because we decide to have a meeting or we give a popular preacher there or we have this, that, and the others because God makes us aware of what the cross means. And here it says in verse 23 of Acts 2, him, that is Jesus, being delivered by the determinate counsel and foreknowledge of God. Now this is what it says, Jesus, God knew about all this cross work that he was going to do and actually determined that it would be so. See God's providence working in the cross as it does in our daily life to bear our daily cross. It's not the same cross that Jesus bore, but we all have crosses to bear. And he says, Ye have taken and by wicked hands have crucified and slain whom God hath raised up, having loosed the pains of death because it was not possible that he should be holden of it. So here, here we see the scriptures that show us why Jesus died is because it was foreordained by God. Why he died on the cross? Because it said he was crucified uh, in wicked hands. It's the wicked hands that God allowed. You see, God is not only controlling all the things that we do as believers and his people, but he controls the wicked too. And he uses the wicked. I don't understand it. I don't understand how this guy in Russia can be like he's doing it murdering those people, those innocent people. So, But God uses that, and he has a purpose in it. I sure don't know what it is, but I'm going to tell you when I think about the cross, that's the only thing that can be hopeful for the Ukrainians and for us in America is the cross. We've got to get back to the cross. Uh, Fanny Crosby sings a, hymn, sings a hymn, wrote a hymn, sings it, I guess, too, but we ought to sing it more near the cross. Jesus, keep us near the cross. That is a precious fountain right there at that cross. May the Lord bless us, particularly this time, this season of the year, not that we ought to every day think of the cross, but it is a, a place where we can find a rest that we can find nowhere else. That's where everything is settled, 
right at the cross. And when you get unglued in life and situations come, when you have physical pain, sickness, death, loss of loved ones, um, you don't know what to do with this, that, and the other, and we all have those things to face. When we go to the cross, I'm going to tell you, it's a level ground. We humble ourselves, and we understand that Jesus died for us. And if Jesus died for us, then we need to live for him. And we need to live uh, a bountifully joyful life, uh, thanking him for his blessing, humbly but confidently believing that our sins are forgiving, which enables us to forgive others, to, to have the power to press on when we feel like quitting so many times. Uh, so we think about why Jesus died. He died to give us power, to enable us to have spiritual power. I'm not talking about going to the gym and see how much weight we can bench press or how many jumping jacks we can do or how many marathons we can do. I'm talking about the power to live a godly life. The power not to sin, see? Jesus, by dying on the cross, has given us a power, an earth power. We don't have to sin anymore. We still do, but we don't have to. We have power not to do. We have the ability to not to sin. How about that? Where does that come from? The cross. Before that happened, we didn't have. We had the inability not to sin. That's what we had. And then, and then we, we have this way of praising God. Don't be ashamed of the cross. Paul, remember, said, you know, to those that don't believe, it is foolishness. It could, sure could be. I could see how it could be. If you didn't have a quickening influence from the Holy Spirit, what good sense would the cross make for a man like Jesus or anybody dying for somebody else? But when God quickens you and reveals that, that he is the Son of God, and that he died for you, it's going to change your life. And it will be a, a, an ever change. It will be a sanctifying change, an ongoing process let alone the justification of knowing that your sins are forgiven forever. And then to understand that he took our place. Man, that should be forever. That would make us want to get to church as quick as we can, to make every sunrise service that we can make, to do anything we can, can to help others, and say, you know what, Jesus took my place. So I want to take my place in his kingdom that he has given, because the strength of Gideon's army, you remember, was not how many people they had. God kept cutting them down. So they got about 300. It started about 32,000. Got about 300. But the strength, the Bible says, of Gideon's army was not the numbers, but that every man was in his place. When every woman and man and boy and girl of God's people get in that place, and that place is at the cross. That's where our place is. And we, we, we manifest that in God's church when we're able to come. If we're able to go physically, some of us can, I know, but we are, we ought to go. We ought to manifest that. If we're home, we want to manifest that around our friend or family. Just by yourself, just tell much, just today, tell God how much you appreciate the cross and dying for you on the cross. Uh, that he took your place. And then it's going to make our death a lot easier know that God died for us. He's been there. He took our place so that we can live forever. And then, and then to understand his promises. This word is true, every bit of it, but there's nothing here that's not stained with the blood of the cross. And so may the Lord bless us. There is a scarlet thread throughout this whole Bible that comes from the cross of Jesus. And it's God's promises that are fulfilled. And, you know, this book ends with the word grace. And Jesus was talking there. says says, heaven's going to be in place. There's no pain, no death, no sorrow, no goodbye. That's because of the cross. That's the victory that we have in him. And so he says, come unto me all ye that are thirst, and I'll give you drink. And may the Lord bless us to thirst after the cross and to bless God and thank him for it. Would you pray with me? Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the cross. We thank you for dying for us. We want to praise you for it more, Lord. We want to thank you for taking our place. We want to live within the power of the cross and enable us, Lord, to, to love you and serve you and love others as we should. And Lord, we thank you that your promises are so true. Your word tells the good and the bad, shows us our lives, warts and all. But nevertheless, Lord, we can, we can understand that it's a promise you've made that Jesus would die on the cross. You promised us that we'll have suffering and trouble in this world. It's a promise. It's going to happen. It has and will continue. But we know, Lord, because you died for us on the cross, 
we rejoice, as James says, even in being able to suffer in a like way. Not that we could ever carry the sins of another, but we, Lord, can relate to the suffering that you had in, in a much smaller way that we have, of course, compared to yours. But nevertheless, Lord, we joy that you count us worthy to suffer for your sake because of your death for us on the cross. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.